Hello, everybody. My name is Benny, and welcome to The Fool's Apprentice. Today is another one-card tarot study, and I have a guest who will be discussing the moon card with me. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, I'm great. Thank you for having me. Will you introduce yourself to everyone, please? Sure. My name is Laura. My channel here on YouTube is Aquamarine18 tarot and books and the 18 is a reference to the moon card so i'm really glad that this card was available for me to come on today and i'm really excited and where are you from and how long have you been studying the tarot i live in central ontario so i'm uh an hour and a half two hours north of toronto for folks to have a reference point and i got my first tarot deck maybe 23 24 years ago oh wow from from my family. Um, so as a very young teenager, there's definitely been some, you know, waxing and waning in my interest over the, the years, um, but have been practicing more seriously, studying more seriously, I would say for the last 10 or so. Okay. I veered away. I, we, I veered away in kind of my late teens, early 20s from being interested, but I do still have that first deck that I ever owned. My family saved it. So. Oh, that's wonderful. I wish I would have saved uh, my first one. Oh, that's another story. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to go there. Um, okay. So let's discuss the moon card. One, I'm just curious. Talk to me why the moon card is your favorite card, because obviously it's in your channel name, it's on your Instagram name. Sure. So I initially, I think like a lot of other folks who are here on TarotTube, started off as like a lurker who was commenting on other people's videos. So Aquamarine 18 was more of a username than a channel name initially, because I was commenting, but I wasn't making my own videos. And Aquamarine is my birthstone and 18 the moon card for the golden dawn association with pisces so as pisces that was my uh, incorporating a few references to that as pisces my sun sign and my mercury is in pisces as well okay i can already tell that you're gonna have <laughs> in depth and broad knowledge of this card which is exciting <laughs> for me because one of the reasons i did this is not only to you know work with other people but also to learn more about each and every card and also to keep myself accountable in learning the uh, the tarot. So tell me what the moon card means and represents for you. Sure. Um, I think the moon card is one that gets sometimes negatively depicted. And I don't I don't uh -huh. feel that way about the moon card. I think the moon card for me is about is about fantasy and imagination and mystery and the unknown and, and liminality and you know, perhaps a, 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 it could be a lack of clarity or, or illusions that could be challenging, certainly. But I think that that's also kind of where the magic happens, right? So it's, it's a really rich card, I think, especially when you th bring in maybe some, some astrological associations or other kinds of um, associations like that. There's just so much. And which Rider Waite Smith clone do you have? I brought the um, Centennial. The Centennial. I will say this, the Centennial is one of the few right away clones that I really do enjoy. I actually don't have a copy of it. Uh, maybe I should get it. And I have the Neo Rider, you know, I've showed it so many times. <laughs> it's a good one. It comes in a tin too for a little portable study deck. It's a good one. I like the colors in this one that are a little bit less, um, a little bit less bright than some Darn. of the others. Yeah, the other ones is just too much. So uh, for me, of course, this card deals like I think everybody at one point really learns it as the intuition card. Mm -hmm. And so that I, I do see that. But I see this more as the intuition on what to do when things aren't clear, like um, mm -hmm. when things feel discombobulated where you all of a sudden maybe your anxieties or fears are really getting the best of you and you don't know what direction to go, go that you really have to kind of listen to your inner voice and sometimes it's not a voice it's a, a feeling something that's nudging you and really trusting it like now more than ever because it's really going to get you where you need to go so in that respect that's how i generally see this card for me two years in 
I know there will be a lot more nuance as time goes on. But when I think of this card, there are two things that I think of. One is uh, a dark alleyway, you know, that you need to go through. And it's just that moment of pause, like, do I really go this way or don't I go this way? Because your brain takes you to all of these things that could happen. And of course, movies don't help. Books don't help because it's always the worst place where it can be. But um, because things aren't unclear, you never know like what's right and what's not or if things are upside down. When I think of my life, uh, this card, uh, uh, how I try to associate it with my life that helps me is when I was in the military, I was, oh, I'm so old, people may not know, remember this. I was in the mil- military when don't ask, don't tell was still a big thing. And so there was this, it was a witch hunt. My name came yeah. up. Um, and it was a really, really difficult time in my life because that was when I was finally getting to a place where either I was quite suicidal at that time um, because of my sexual orientation. And then the idea of like accepting myself, not accepting myself, society, religion, all this stuff. And finally, I got to a place where I was okay with me, but the military wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so the people, and this was what was so discombobulating for me, the people who I thought were going to be supportive were not. The people that Mm -hmm. I thought were not going to be supportive were extremely supportive. Uh, I had death threats. I had, you know, that I was talking about that alleyway Mm -hmm. where I worked in the military. The building I worked at went through this wooded area with the road. And I always took a breath when I went through that, uh, on that road between in this forested area, because my brain would just take me to a place that there's some guy in the woods going to shoot me. It was really stressful, but I, I literally just believed in what I was doing. I really just did the next right thing. And I really relied on my intuition a lot on, you know, being able to maneuver through that. And fortunately for me, I was able to get my honorable discharged. I think back and I'm thinking, wow, I can't believe I made it through that. But that for me is very much the moon card because of the unknown that seemed to be happening like moment by moment for me and me really just being grounded and trusting that I knew what it was, that I was, I was going to be okay somehow. Thank you for, for being willing to share that with me. That's a really, um, you know, intense time of life. And I think that a lot of us in our 2SLGBTQ plus community have probably shared elements of those experiences of trying to maybe intuit ahead of time where support or opposition is going to come from and experiences of maybe not always being right about that. And I don't know why I shared that, probably too much information, but that, but this card really always takes me to to that space and i think that that you know could be connected to the where the moon falls in the trajectory of the of the star to the moon and to the sun because you know there's the the moment of the tower yeah. that that real that realization where things you know that you think about the world or yourself or you know these deep held ideas get get blown apart for for better or for worse and and the star there's that hope and that you know there's a new direction on the horizon of that star but there's uncertainty on that journey too and once Uh you you know decide to to go towards that star there is the point of of uncertainty and mystery that comes before the sun oh my god and you okay i've recorded a few of these today because i I record them in batches because it just it's easier Mm -hmm. everybody kind of together uh, and then I can schedule them out. I, you're literally, you're the you're the third person today. Everybody has discussed the cards before and after, which oh, really yeah. hasn't happened much before. Mm-hmm. Watch the, the series, so that's really fascinating. Which has led me to, as you were talking, think about the sun card. And I remember driving off base because I ended up getting discharged. Uh, I call it. I got fired from the Marine Corps. Uh, be, driving off base and playing this music and feeling so free and alive, which is right after this card. That Amazing. 
Um, do you see this as like a mysterious card, a card that's kind of shows impending danger that might be coming up? Because we talked about the negativity at the beginning. Mm -hmm, do you see mm -hmm. any aspect of that with this card? I mean, I think it it can be. And I know we'll talk about, about symbolism mm -hmm. later on, right? But there's um, there's a French phrase, entre chien et loup, between a dog and a wolf. Uh -huh. And and this this phrase has to do with kind of um, just before dark, kind of twilight time, where the light is shadowy and things are unclear. And so like a wolf and a dog would be hard to distinguish, right? And so this is what entre chien et loup refers to is this kind of uncertainty or like liminal space of an in-betweenness and things can feel i think really dangerous in that space right things are if something is unclear or you know it might be dangerous or it might not be it might be a a wolf that is maybe more dangerous or a dog that is maybe more friendly but i also think of that you know the nighttime and the moonlight as as much as those can be scary like the dark alley scary things to navigate that darkness and moonlight has been has been cover for and refuge for people who oh yeah are marginalized and people whose practices and life ways are are marginalized and that cover of dark and moonlight has been a place of of, of freedom yeah as well. the, i think of the underground railroad you know, where being able to, you know, move from place to place in the darkness. And I, I do see that uh, to your point, and I'm glad you brought that up because I don't think I don't think I really ever thought about this with the, the moon card is for a lot of people, you know, the moon, the darkness is a place of comfort and serenity, like people sitting by a lake, you know, in the darkness by themselves to that comfort of solitude and you know so i i get that 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 makes sense i don't think about that at all when i think of this card so you've added a nuance that i hadn't thought about before one of my favorite places to go kind of nighttime hiking or camping um in my province is a dark sky preserve so it's a preserve against light pollution so all around it there's no there's no street lights there's no city lights nothing and you you drive in with your headlights and everything's dark if you drive in during the night you can go in the day too and walk mm -hmm. around that and at night it's just the the quiet and the stars like is nothing like what you can see in in even a small city and it's just it's magical it is so magical that and, and so you go camping there or you just mm -hmm. go to, yep, yeah tent camping you can tent camp there oh very nice yeah. um i don't think i my brain the way my brain works i go to a place like that i'm looking for cougars i'm looking for bears <laughs> i don't and i think it's probably my childhood as well i i've never felt comfortable in darkness uh and so this card really like resonates with me with because my brain is so visual and so vivid i have a, if i'm not careful i can have a thought that will take me into storyline that does not exist. And the thing that's dangerous for that with me is all of a sudden I start living that fantasy world that I mm -hmm. created emotionally in real life. Mm -hmm. And it creates a lot of disruption in my life if I allow that to continue. So I have to keep pulling myself back and getting grounded in reality instead of listening to the story that I, I create. And so let's talk about the symbology. So sure. we had talked about the dogs. Mm -hmm. So um, in my studies, uh, which makes sense, is that uh, the dog, the, the, both dogs are like the animalistic part of who we are and mm -hmm. what can come out. Uh, but the, the, the one that I really like is this idea of the, the wolf being like this dangerous animal and then the dog being this very tamed, you know, dog. And so you get both sides, but both mm -hmm. can be dangerous in the, in the mm -hmm. evening. Uh, so I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, and A.E. Waite talks about this, right? And the pictorial key to the tarot for, for this talks about um, the, the animals being kind of our animal instincts or tendencies, um, which which have all kinds of sides, right? Could be, could be dangerous and could not, and could be 
um, you know, repressed in ways that are dangerous as well. So I think there's a lot of layers there. And it's interesting, I don't, um, the, the moon in the Smith weight is a waxing moon. So that sense of new possibilities of the waxing phase coming out of a new moon. And we're filming this on a day of a new moon, which is interesting. Um, and Let me tell you, I don't know anything about the moon yet, but I knew you were going to bring stuff like that up. I think that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even know it was a new moon. Uh, I will say, you're this again, remember, I recorded three, yep. <laughs> my third video today. Uh, I'm looking to the side uh, because you're the second person today that mentioned the pictorial key of the tarot. Yes. So I take that as a sign that, mm, Benny, maybe you need to get the book. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can find it. You can get a copy of it with this actually in a there was a there was a box set. My copy of this came with a copy of Pictorial Key to the Tarot, but it's also a like it's public domain. You can read the whole book online. Oh, OK. Well. Oh, good. Good. Um, OK, so the crustacean, any that mean anything for you? Sure. Um, so the in in astrology, the the moon, the moon's domicile is in cancer. And the moon rules the sign of cancer and so the so the crab of cancer i think is um easily connected to to this for sure the um you know ae weight talks about the the crustacean in quite negative terms actually as kind of the worst things trying to emerge that generally get pushed back down Trauma. but like like yeah ptsd things like that mm -hmm. into, mm -hmm. into a mental health perspective Mm -hmm. um, but I think of it mostly as as indicating the moon's domicile in Cancer, the sign of the crab. Well, I think <laughs> of it as in in my some people write in a way that is so intellectual it's it's hard to kind of process in the mm -hmm. sense of like to make it for me like layman's terms that uh, I can digest. Mm -hmm. So I I think of him or the him right uh, as <laughs> the the scariest part of the darkness, something that like you see, but are you really seeing what you're seeing? Like that illusion, like, like you see shadows in the dark, but is there someone there that created the shadow or is that my mind playing games with me? Uh, it's that boogeyman. For me, it's like that boogeyman that could be real, the, the upper half that's actually on land, but also it could be just, you know, a figment of your imagination that's scaring the hell out of you. Mm -hmm. The second portion that doesn't really come onto land that is underwater. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, you know, different, I mean, this looks a lot more like a lobster, but a, but a lot of these kind of crabs and crustaceans will move in these really non-linear ways, right? And so in, oh, there, yeah. there, there, are some, there are some older astrology associations of the sign of cancer with, with wandering or with, with kind of moving in, in a kind of nonlinear fashion. And so I can think about that with the with the crab as well, or the crustacean. Now, do you have any anything with the towers or the or the pillars there that the pillars are interesting. The pillars are interesting. And they're in they're in the Marseille decks as well. So this is a this is a Jean de Blay restoration. Move it to your um, left a little. To your left there you no the other way. Um, yeah to your left. Ma, this is okay hang on do you want it <laughs> okay there oh perfect just for a second okay okay oh i see the yeah. tower yeah marseille has the towers too its moon seems to be a full moon instead of a waxing moon which is interesting but okay the, ta right. the towers feel like they're the last you know what i think of this is if that path is that path into the unknown the pillars just feel like that threshold where you're really point of no return yeah <laughs> Okay. All right. And then of course, for me, water has come up a lot for me recently. Mm -hmm. and the, the fact that it's emotion. So for me, if you're not careful, you know, this could really up be an upheaval emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, careful. So I, I see that part as well with the water. Um, I don't use a lot of symbology overall, uh, as mm -hmm. of yet, but that's what I get overall. Um, do you read the reversal on these? Um, I have at different points in my tarot journey. I have more or less. Right now, I'm in a less often of okay. reading with the reversals, um, to be honest. But we could talk about reversals if you want to talk about reversals. Well, I don't really read reversals overall. Um, I, and I talk about this 
like pretty much in all the videos. Uh, I, I read whatever comes up. For me, it's like not always negative. It's more like warning signs. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, like this one, I, I doesn't come up. Surprisingly, this card doesn't come up very often. Mm -hmm. me, so I haven't had to like digest the information as much. But it's more like um, things can get turned really ugly. So um, mm -hmm. being in a relation, an unhealthy relationship or a relationship that all of a sudden you don't trust all of a sudden can turn on you because mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're checking their phone and you're following them. You're showing up at their work to see if their car's in the parking lot. You know, you're parked outside of their house if you live in two different domains. All of a sudden you get to this place where your mind has gone mm -hmm. over the deep end. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that would probably be like an verse, so like kind of a, reading for me if i did a relationship reading with that or when you or, read go ahead when you when you read do you like to read with clear spread positions where you'll pick a card for each spread position or do you read maybe more open ended like without spread positions more would you say no i'm i'm more all right so generally what i'll do is i don't read from left to right unless mm -hmm. the spread requires it so there's a spread mm -hmm. that Nick, uh, who I used to work with, he was a mentor, had me do which was like a fool's journey. And you put uh, like 13 cards out and wherever the fool and the fool had to be one of them where the fool landed. That's where you were in that journey. And you read the cards from left to right. Okay. Very interesting, right? Uh, I might do a video on that. Um, so what I do is I look at the cards and I, whatever stands out, I can just see the storyline that comes up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's how I, I work with it. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's say if I had five cards and for some reason the moon stood out for me, then that would be the overarching theme of that reading. And that, the other cards would help support that narrative. Okay. Um, okay. And usually major arcana cards I pay more attention to because they mm -hmm. are big energies within the reading. Mm -hmm. um, which is interesting when I get two or three major arcanas in one uh, reading, because then that's a lot. And so I'm still kind of navigating how to work with that. But that's generally mm -hmm. how I read. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. I was thinking that in terms of the reversal question for me, sometimes I will be reading with spreads with really clear positions, you know, a card for a, um, a risk to avoid, a card for a helper, a card for, you know. And, and so then really where the card comes up de determines a lot of, oh, I yeah. think, what might be for others, whether a card would be reversed or not, whether it would be a more more positive or a negative kind of interpretation, or whether it would be a more challenging interpretation or a more supportive one. Like the question is going to answer that. If this shows up as a card position and the card position is about a challenge that you're facing, that's very different than if it shows up in a position yeah. that is um, the exciting thing on your horizon. You know, like it, it's clearly going to take on different I, significations like that. I do have a three card spread that I learned from somebody on one of the tarot channels that I love and I use a lot. And it is uh, the mid, I use the, an Oracle card for my middle card. That's the, mm -hmm. that's what I'm supposed to be focusing on for the day. The left card is a tarot card. That's going to let me know what I need to do that day to be successful in what it, that middle card is telling me to focus on the mm -hmm. right card tells me what can get in the way of me being successful, mm. things to be mindful of. And so if the, that card would be like the warning card, you know, mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. the moon landed there, uh, that's how I would read it. If it landed at the beginning, that's how I would read it, more positive. Uh, that's a really good, that would be a really good kind of daily, like a morning daily draw. And if I read, if I read a spread that's more like a nine card box or something without those specific positions, then similarly to you, it's kind of what stands mm -hmm. out to me. Um, and I also think about things like the rows of cards, you know, who's beside who, what's, you know, who's looking at yeah. who, these kinds of directional things as well. Yeah. And I did, and I generally, it's interesting. I don't know when it happened. But I did that for like months where I did that spread because I really liked it so much. Mm -hmm. Now I still do a three card spread, but the cards on the, either side of the Oracle card, they have no set question. They just are there. Okay. So that's interesting that I just started doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, I've actually started doing three card tarot spreads as well. 
But uh, I need to expand. I'm stuck on three, but it's such a comfortable space for me to be at. Three is a good three is a good space. Honestly, I feel like so many um, kind of beginner books and things talk about a card of the day. And I'm always if I'm talking to a beginner, it's like, no, 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 get to two, get to two or get to three, because then they talk to each other. And then you get, you know, much more depth. I think the the one card a day starts to get keywordy, I think, yeah. quickly. But when you have to think about how they go together, that I brings a lot of learning. I card a day and I didn't it just didn't do a lot for me because yeah. It didn't make me really critically think. And also they didn't build relationships with each other as, as you were saying. I feel because I've done three cards, um, it's just helped me see more nuance in what the cards could be. Uh, so that helps, uh, I think has helped me quite a bit. I'm getting comfortable in reading for myself. I'm not comfortable reading for others yet, but uh, I'll get there. So what's your favorite? Okay, you had mentioned that it would hard. It's hard for you to kind of figure out what's your favorite card. Yep. So, what card is really standing out for you? Sure. So, the moon card that I chose is from the Anima Mundi Tarot. Oh, oh, that's a beautiful card. And it's I love it. Anima Mundi is one that, a deck that I've had for a very long time, and it was one of the first decks that I got. That's a bit more pippish in in the minors and this one you know it's a it's very simple in some ways just the moon and the water but as you said the wateriness of, the, of that moon card is really important to me too i grew up on lake huron and so that moon over the water is you know something near and dear to me and i just think that the moon itself you know whether it's drawing from astrology or drawing from, you know, different cultural or religious significations or spiritual significations. The moon itself has so much symbolism and so much power. I like this kind of very stripped down. There's just the moon on the water. Some of my favorite cards are very minimal mm -hmm. uh, in their depictions, like black and white decks with a simple outline. Like, oh, the devil card in the spoiler tarot is a black image with an outline of the devil consuming a human being mm -hmm. and it is such a powerful card but it's so very simple and what i mean mm -hmm. by simple is you know there's just not all this other information uh that mm -hmm. you need because that image alone is just enough for you to like really go with so mm -hmm. i get that that, that that's beautiful yeah. uh mine Oh, God, I love this. It's my second favorite deck of all time. It is the Bohemian Gothic from Baba Studios. Ooh. I love this deck. This oh, card. That's beautiful. This card kind of represents um, that, oh, that mystery, uh, that uncertainty. But she, uh, so in the, the book, she's a, a witch, but she's a very beautiful and powerful woman. And instead of all black, she has this like royal purple outfit. Uh, and then there, there's her companion who uh, has blood on the mouth. So it lets you know that this this, this wolf is dangerous, uh, but not to her. And then there's this little, let me put it up closer. Yep. Uh, right here mm -hmm. is Anne playing a, f uh, a flute, which represents like madness in, uh, of the, uh, of the dark part of this card, which I really like. And there's the moon in the back. It's just a very, very powerful card. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love it. Uh, and in, in the guidebook really talks about this, which is she really like a bad person or a good person, or is she just a very confident woman that knows her power mm -hmm. you know, and is willing to use it. So I love this card. This, this is such a, it's one of my favorite uh, cards within the whole deck. Cause it gives me the feel of mm -hmm. the moon card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. Love it. When it brings that, there's a lot of like the moonlight, you know, the, the, the yeah. moonlight on the figure's face and the moonlight on the waves, I think is a really beautiful feature in, in moon cards, thinking about the moon being associated with with receptiveness and receiving things since the moon receives the sun's light and reflects it out. I like to see when the moon then reflects on other things in this in the scene, whatever they might be. Yeah, it it lights an area in, mm -hmm. enough 
so if I think at the, of the meaning, it it is not enough where you feel confident stepping into it, but it is enough where you can get a feel like when you walk into your own house, you, you walk around pretty confidently in the dark mm-hmm. because you know where everything's at, but you still have to be cautious because something of could have been moved, you know? So, um, yeah. Yeah, right. that's that mystery, that mystery, but it's also, that's where possibility is. You know? yes. like that's where dreaminess is and fantasy is. And that's, that's magic to me. Well, thank you so much for coming by and discussing this card with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I've had a great time. Okay. And um, do you have other moon cards with you by chance? Because you said you had a whole bunch. Do you want to share a few? I'll share a few others that jumped out to me and I'll just really quickly. Okay. Um, I also, for similar reasons, I love the moon in the nature scapes tarot, which is a photo of a moon. Oh my God, this, is, this is crazy. The Literally one of the two people picked their favorite card from nature scapes. This what's go- I don't know what's going on today, <laughs> but it is so interesting. I, I find it very um, difficult. I've been doing the top tarot trumps tag where we share different, you know, favorites of each card. And for cards like the sun and the moon or cards with a lot of nature symbolism in it, I find myself really drawn to the photo decks because the nature itself is so beautiful. Right, but, right. You know, so I chose that. I chose um, Mindscapes Tarot by John Rice, oh, which is a majors only deck. I haven't deck. seen that one. That one's actually really beautiful. It's a majors only deck. They're paintings. They're amazing. Um, it was kickstarted. I'm. I need to. I need to just. Okay, I'll pick one that has more of the symbolism in it, and then I'm going to stop. Okay. I also have um, Afro Tarot Two, which is a collage deck. Ooh. And this one just has a huge moon there in a way that I think is really interesting. Is that a hyena? Mm-hmm. And what's the other one? A hyena and a jackal, I think. Jackal. Oh wow, that is so interesting. Yeah, I, I love that the moon is just so in your face. Yeah, it's just a cool play on, you know, like a lot of it is really traditional. There is a little crustacean there in the water as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. I so see. It has all those elements, but they're just arranged so interestingly, I think. Very nice. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. Everybody, again, my name is Benny. I am the Fool's Apprentice, and thank you for joining us, and have a wonderful day. Bye, guys. Bye.